goes below 50 percent you lose that a bit uh, you, you lose that bonus combat uh, percentage that you get and i i want to have cavalry but i usually have it a lot less than infantry so through all my combats i mean battles sorry through all my battles i always have the cavalry bonus also if you're going to start a siege and you want to split troops you you can split uh, one or two infantry and put them in a front and then you can go with that army so let's say you go with 8k stack and you and you land in, in champagne so what happened here is that with uh, reinstalling Europa News LS4 I forgot to remove some stuff uh, this actually hurts my computer a lot I get massive frame drops from shadows I hate shadows in all my games one thing that usually happens is that uh, shadows fuck them up so yeah I will. so back on the thing I was discussing before so let's say I move to Champagne and I want to leave a couple of troops there I would like uh, detach siege I would lose one or two K infantry and I would still have that bonus from cavalry so that like I was saying, you always need to have like spare amount of infantry in your uh, in your troops so you don't lose that bonus and that's basically how I do my army compositions it works with me so far and I like it especially with uh, the quality ideas uh, it works really really good because of the 10% combat infantry ability and usually the nations I played with were infantry based so yeah that that's maybe also I mean I played with Ottomans and their infantry although they have bonuses with uh, although with you know cavalry bonuses and stuff like that but they are pretty decent So yeah, now only three years have passed and I'm starting to get annoyed with uh, my... Oh, Venice is in coalition against me. So why would Venice go into a coalition against me? I don't really know. I got four wazzles, I won two wars and I was with Austria in the war against Bohemia. So I don't know why. Tell me. They are too far away to get uh, to go into coalition against me I will never never go against them and I haven't gone into war with in last like what four or five years now why the sudden coalition but that also means that I need to manage my diplomats a little bit better I need to see what nations hate me and what not so here I'm sending my uh, merchant to Denmark node, I call that Denmark node because Denmark is usually the leader in that node, but it's Lubeck. So to get more uh, income into my trade node, usually uh, at the beginning uh, Lubeck and northern and eastern or Mediterranean areas are richer in money that than like what's that that French node. I, I don't. No, the name doesn't even matter. So until the colonization starts and stuff like that, you don't need to worry about it. But getting money from trade is actually really, really good. You can get get insane amounts of money. Um, the other day I tested. I got around, I think seven hundred gold per month just from trade i was testing it with uh, console commands and stuff like that i wanted to see how much you can get with maximum amount of uh, trade in americas so yeah why not test it So Holstein is pissing me off because they want to ca they want to a cardinal, but it's not like that's really going to happen. 
So you see how that extra diplomat is helping me? I can do more stuff with my diplomatic powers, with my allies, enemies, and uh, vassals. And now Bohemia is pissing me off. Uh, cardinals are good, but they get annoying at some point. Although you should do them, I'm not saying that you shouldn't. You you should definitely invest your time in cardinaling because they give you a lot of bonuses. That, that's one thing that's keeping my legitimacy above 15 right now, and the prestige, of course, but. Three cardinals and being papal controller is actually really really good. So I'm not checking which nations have university. I know. Oh, uh, this is a nice little event. I either go for 50% uh, more trade or money, and I went for money this time. Later on you want to go for that 15% because that's really 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 good later on. Especially when the when the numbers scales scale greatly. So I'm checking now which uh, dude I'm going to get and I went for diplomatic one so I get more reputation and I get plus three more points so I negate the, those minus two now so that's really 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 what I needed although I will get less money because level three advisors cost a lot that's really uh, kind of hard to maintain in the beginning Later on you can do it perf perfectly fine, but in the beginning they are kind of hard to maintain. Another royal marriage. And my legitimacy now fell below 50 because I got royal marriage. Another 11 years. Or, yeah, 11 years to go till the party starts. Mm, a little bit of light frame drops and stuff like that happens. Oh, Milan, oh, Milan was in collision? Oh. Right, I, I forgot about that. Yeah, so I had Milan and I have Venice in collision against me. That's not nice. Anyway, even if I went to war against somebody, it doesn't really matter because I really need those vassals annexed. So I can have normal diplomatic points again, and yeah. So I got 10% uh, less military points spent, and that's really nice. And now I can get for longbow or men at arms. I usually go for longbow because I like to be on the offensive, and France declare war on England. <laughs> Well, at least they are focusing on England instead of me. I have 35k troops now, so that gives me... If they attack me and if I play smart, that will give me a lot of uh, power. And actually, me and uh, France are on pair with total manpower, so we have actually the same amount of troops. And that's ex excluding our vassals, so 
with my vessels I have uh, 